We're going to start this service by singing number 246, 246, Redeemed, How I Love to Proclaim It. It's good to see everybody, and hopefully that you're enjoying yourself uh, at your house, and uh, it's uh, good to be in the house of the Lord and together uh, virtually with our brothers and sisters in Christ. So let's go to 246, Redeemed, Redeemed, How I Love to Proclaim It, Redeemed by the Blood of the Lamb. We'll sing the first, third, and fourth verse. Sing it out. Redeemed, How I Love to Proclaim Number 24, and can it be that I should gain? Now sing it out. Think about the words. First, second, and last verse. Number 24, and can it be that I should gain and entrust in the Savior's blood? Died he for me. fell off, my heart was free, I rose, went forth, and followed thee, amazing love, 
How can it be that thou, my God, shouldst die for me? Well, amen, amen. It's good to see everybody. It's good to be with everybody. And uh, so good to be in the house of God, singing the hymns of God. I hope that you're doing well in your place. I hope that the Lord is blessing you and keeping you safe. So let's open the service with a word of prayer. Let's all bow our head and close our eyes. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much, Lord. Lord, for a chance to come to church. Lord, I know this is a bit different, but Lord, in spirit, Lord, we're together. I pray, Lord, that you please bless each and one of us. Help us, Lord, to appreciate the church house. And Lord, I appreciate what you've given us. Lord, I, I can't thank you for the, enough for the past generation who invested so much to give this generation a place to, to meet and fellowship and to meet those social needs that we have in our hearts. Lord, I pray that you'd please help this time to, to help us to, to understand, Lord, uh, your purpose behind it all. Lord, you wanted to give us a place where we could... Uh, have a family, a spiritual family, and we could be of like mind and like faith. I pray, Lord, please bless our members where they are. Bless those who are watching us online and those who are visiting us this, during this time. Lord, I pray you please bless us uh, and bless the service. Bless the preaching of your word, Lord. I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's go to number 236. Number three, 236. No, not one. No, not one. 236. No, not one. No, not one. Let's go to number 208. 208. Number 208. Grace greater than our sin. Grace greater than our sin. third dark is the stain that we cannot hide what can avail to wash it away look there is flowing a crimson tide whiter than snow you may be today 
God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sin on the last marvelous infinite matchless grace freely bestowed on all who believe you who are longing to see his face will you this moment his grace receive grace grace God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sin. Amen, amen. Let's uh, look at the, some announcements right quick. I just want to give everybody a, a reminder of what's going on uh, this next month. If, if uh, we're still able to meet, we are planning to have our spring program. We uh, may have to back it up until May, so just keep that in mind. Uh, but we are planning to have our spring program. And uh, there's a sign-up sheet on the four-year bulletin board for flowers in memory of a loved one for Easter. And uh, the cost is $10. And please make sure that you have your order and money into Miss Ramsey by Wednesday, April 1st. And also indicate what you would like for her to buy for you. It's on the sign-up sheet. Also, uh, we're planning to go to a Lugnuts baseball game June 5th. And uh, the cost is $15. That covers everything. So uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, speaking of the spring program, if don't forget, if you have anybody that you would like for us to pray for as a church, please, uh, we can make this available online. Please get those in. Uh, you can uh, send an email, send a text, uh, or drop this off at the church. We will make up that list. And that way, um, everybody, we can be praying for your friend, and that's what we want to do. Just be thinking of others. Uh, we're really trying to... to um, be, be a blessing to the, the our neighborhood in our Jerusalem. Also, if you have any friend day, friend day, uh, sign up things. If you uh, be, be talking to people about it, be uh, asking people and uh, let them know we've got this going on. Um, if 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 we do have to change the dates, make sure that you have a number to be able to contact them and communicate with them and let them know, hey, we've we've changed the dates. But let's let's be talking about it. Maybe the Lord's given us extra time because uh, he wants he wants more people to come. So uh, that, that'll, that'll be a blessing. So amen. Just wanted to, to remind everybody about that. So let's go in again in our hymnals. To, let's go to number 206. 206. That is, oh, say, but I'm glad. Let's sing the first and last verse of number 206. There is a song in my heart today, something I never had. Jesus has taken my sins away. Oh, say, but I'm glad. Oh, say, but I'm glad. I'm glad. Make mention right quick that we've got a couple people visiting with us today. My mom from Louisiana is here. Hi, mom, and it's good to glad you could join us. Her service is at uh, hers. She's on Central Time, and so she's an hour uh, hour uh, later than us. So I told her yesterday, "Hey, come to Sunday school with us." Her Sunday school, and so she's going to Sunday school with us, and then she's going to go to her service. Going to tune into her service at at uh, at noon our time, which would be eleven her time. So glad to have you here. And Grammy, I heard that Grammy is is watching us. I saw that Grammy was watching us. Hi, Grammy, and uh, so it's it's good to see her. And hopefully, she's able to. They were able to 
to uh, to uh, see what our church is like and and how we do business over here. So. Um, um, Let's let's grab our hymn books. We're going to sing number one zero zero number one zero zero day by day before before you start. Just just I want to read the words and uh, think about the words, um, contemplating about what's going on in in our lives and um, the the things that we're that we're dealing with right now. The words go like this: day by day, and with each passing moment. Strength I find to meet my trials here, trusting in my Father's wise bestowment. I have no cause for worry or for fear. He whose heart is kind beyond all measure gives unto each day what he deems best. Lovingly, it's part of pain and pleasure, mingling toil with peace and rest. What beautiful words, what beautiful words. Let's sing the, all three verses of Day by Day, number 100. Zero, zero. Think of the words. Day by day, and with each passing moment, strength I find to meet my trials here. Trusting in my Father's wise bestowment, I have no cause for worry or for fear. grab our Bibles. We're going to have our scripture reading at this time. We're going to go we're going to go to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. If you're a part of my Sunday school class, this is one of our chapters that we read and uh, we uh, just review weekly and uh, the Lord just impressed upon my heart uh, some thoughts from this chapter that would really help us, especially during this time. Philippians 4, we'll read verses 1 through 13. Philippians chapter 4, verses 1 through 13. It says, Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved and long for my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. I beseech Eudeus and beseech Syntyche that they be of the same mind in the Lord. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labor with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, 
what sort of things are just, what sort of things are pure, what sort of things are lovely, what sort of things are of a good report. If there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned, and received, and heard, and seen in me, do and the God of peace shall be with you. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, that now at the last year care of me hath flourished again, wherein you were also careful, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned, in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much, Lord, for this passage. I thank you so much, Lord, that you've given us your word. Lord, it's a blessing. It's a blessing, Lord. There's so many other languages and cultures and peoples around the world that don't have a copy of your word. Yet, Lord, you've been so gracious to us, and you've given us your word. And Lord, during times of trial and times of uncertainty and, and times when the norm is being upset because of forces outside our control, Lord, we can go to your word and you can give us peace and we can have that anchor and we can stay settled and not panic like the world does. Lord, we have a hope. I pray, Lord, that you please help us, Lord, to rest in that hope and help us, Lord, to, to, to rest on you, rest in your word. Lord, I pray that you please bless the service, bless the message. I pray, Lord, that you please speak to our hearts this morning. I pray that wherever we are, as we're sitting with our family, as we're gathered around the table, as we're, as we're gathered around your word, Lord, that you would speak to our hearts more than anything. I pray, Lord, that you please meet with us this morning. Be with all the churches around the country, the Christians who are having to stay home and the pastors who are at the church the li delivering messages and having to do things a little bit differently i pray lord that you please bless their hearts and please feed us lord we need to be fed our souls are hungry we're thirsty i pray lord that you please bless in jesus name i pray amen Oh, 
theme. And I love the message of that song. For when I am tried, I shall come forth as gold. Amen. Let's turn in our Bibles to Philippians chapter 4. I'd like to share a thought with you this morning regarding uh, this passage. If you look in verse 11, Paul says, Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned. I have learned. As you study the life of Paul, you know that he went through various troublesome situations in his missionary journeys. And Paul, he eventually got to the point where he realized something that we all need to realize. He says here, I have learned. Then he says, in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. Therewith to be content. He says, I have learned this. Because he was in a variety of states. He was in prison sometimes, and he was free sometimes, and he was being betrayed by the brethren sometimes, and he had, had people turning his back on him. He had all kinds of different uh, ups and downs happening in his life. But he says, I have learned. Because you know what he realized? He realized life is God's classroom. And that's what I want to talk to you this morning about is God's classroom. He says here, I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Verse 12, look what he says. He says, I know. Where did he learn? Where did he, where did he get this knowledge from? He got it from God's classroom. He says, I know both what? How to be abased. The word abased means to be put down, to, to be walked all over, to be downtrodden, to be, to, 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 to be like, a, like a mat on the floor. I know how to be abased. Where did he learn? Where did he get that knowledge on how to be abased? He got it from God's classroom. Then he says, and I know how to abound. I know how to have blessings. I know how to, how to, 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 to have more than enough. Where did I learn that from? I learned it from God's classroom. He says, everywhere and in all things. He's saying, in all of life's situations, I'm instructed. Where is he instructed? In God's classroom. He recognizes that everywhere he goes, in every situation, in all things that happen to, to him, he was in God's classroom. He said, I am instructed both what? To be full. God, he is instructing him to be full. But he's also instructing him, what does he say? To be hungry. He's also instructing him to abound. He's also instructing him to suffer need. And so then he concludes with verse 13. He says, I can do all things. What things? I can be abased. I can abound. I can be full. I can be hungry. I can suffer need through Christ, which strengtheneth me. With that in mind, I want you to turn to Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53. This is a wonderful passage that talks about our Messiah, our Jesus. Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 2. He says... For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. You see, Paul said, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. I can be abased, I can be abound, I can be full, I can be hungry, I can suffer need. Why? Through Christ. Well, how, how is it that we can do this through Christ? Because the Bible says that Jesus also had no form or comeliness. There was no beauty in him that we should desire him. Verse 3, he is despised. Jesus is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. And we he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he openeth not, opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he openeth not out his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. How can Paul do all these things? How can he go through all these situations, these, this abounding and this abasing and this being full and this being hungry and all these highs and low, uh, lows in life? Because Jesus had already done it. In Christ. In Christ. 
And, and this Lamb of God, this Messiah, we, we, we can gain, gain comfort. You know, you know, when you're going down a trip, or when I, I was talking to, to, to a friend of mine down in, in Louisiana, um, Brother Whitmer, just uh, found out that his wife, his wife has leukemia. And my heart goes out to him. My heart goes out to him because I've been down that path. And so I reached out to him this week. I said, listen, if, you, if, if you're comfortable with talking with me, I'd love to call you and pray with you. And we had a good long conversation this week. But it's comforting to know that somebody has been down that path. And that's why Paul said, I can do this through Christ. Because Jesus has been down this path. I'm not going it alone. This abasing, this poverty, this being hungry, this, this going without, he's done it. He's done it. Go to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. You see, Jesus is the king of heaven. The, Jesus is, is the one who, who authored this redemption plan. And, he, and he, he, he came, he reduced himself down to human size. And went through all these things for us. Because he knew that in our sinful condition, we were, sin was going to hurt us. And we needed somebody that we could identify with. Go to Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. It says, Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better, better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. And then it describes Jesus. Notice at the end of verse 5, it's a colon, meaning it's going to describe Jesus. It's continuing the thought. Verse 6, who, Jesus, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery, robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. You ever feel like your reputation has been attacked? You ever feel like that, that you're embarrassed or you, you're humiliated and... and, and be, Jesus made himself of no reputation. How can you get through a time of humiliation? You know Jesus has gone through the same thing. And that, that just buoys your spirit. That, that, that lifts your spirit knowing he, he, he understands. He understands. How many times have you gone through a, a trial times? Uh, uh, my, my wife, sometimes she'll, she'll, she'll uh, want to talk to other preacher's wives or other, other people and, and, and other ladies, and, and she'll, she'll explain some things that are going on, and, and, and then she'll come back to me and says, you know what? She told me about her kids, and, I was, and, and she's, what she explained to me, it made me feel so good because I'm not the only one. <laughs> uh, having somebody that understands helps, and that's what Jesus is. You see, you see, it says, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Now, those are humiliating enough for the God of gods and the King of kings and the Lord of lords and, the, and, and the, the, the master of the universe to do, to make himself of no reputation. This, you look at Revelation. Who are they saying holy, holy, holy to? But he said, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to depose myself. I'm going to step off my throne. I'm going to reduce myself. I'm going to put my reputation aside. He made himself of no reputation. He took upon him the form of a servant, the one that does the lowly jobs. And was made in the likeness of men, fallen men, not 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 a, a man in, in in his original creation, which was a little lower than the angels. No, fallen man, sinful man. He 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 he, he be, was made in the likeness of sinful man. Verse eight. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. Listen, this is this is how far down he went. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death. Now, that's not a problem, being obedient to death. I, I, I know there's been some great men of the faith and great people of the faith. They were martyred for their faith. A martyr's death is a glorious death, but it says even the death of the cross. The death of the cross was a criminal's death. It was a criminal's death. It wasn't a glorious death. It was an embarrassing death. It was a shameful death. But Jesus said, I will submit to even a criminal's death. So how could Paul do all these things? How could he be abased? Well, Jesus was definitely abased. And so he had somebody to, to go with him on that. How could he abound? How could he be full? How could he be hungry? How could he suffer need? Because Jesus was there. And so 
he was teaching us, he was teaching us that God has us in a classroom. In verse 4, if you can turn back to Philippians chapter 4, he says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice in the Lord always. That word rejoice, though the prefix re means back again, and the, the root joyce means joy. And God says, Joy in the Lord always. Joy again in the Lord again and again and again and again and again. Don't ever get tired of God's presence. Don't ever get tired of what God has given you. Don't ever get tired of what He has promised you. Rejoice in the Lord always. Discipline yourself. Discipline yourself to be happy in the Lord. There's a statement that, 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 that goes like this. Familiarity breeds contempt. Have you ever heard that one? Familiarity breeds contempt. But somebody has said, but not to the character. Not to the person with character because they discipline themselves to rejoice in the Lord always. Always. In the highs, in the lows, I'm going to rejoice in the Lord. Again and again and again, I'm going to join the Lord. I'm going to join the Lord. I'm not going to lose, I'm not going to lose the fizz. I, I describe it like, like if you open up a two-liter bottle and you have the fizz and you pour it into a cup and it fizzes all up. And I, 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 I uh, imagine somebody's emotions like, oh, wow, it's so exciting. And it's bubbly, 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 bubbly. One, the, the, the Coke's going to go flat. How are you going to enjoy it then? A disciplined person will find something to like about flat Coke or flat drinks. That's what he's wanting us to do here. Discipline ourselves to rejoice in the Lord again and again. Don't get tired of His presence. Don't get tired of His Word. Don't get tired of coming to church. Don't lament something after it's gotten taken away from you. Enjoy it while you have it. Remember I talked about a couple weeks ago about, about fearing God's goodness? Fear, fear losing God's goodness? That's something that we've got to discipline. He says rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Don't get tired of His presence. You see, life here on earth is merely practice for heaven. Life here on earth is merely practice for heaven. Think about it. What will be the centerpiece of heaven? What will be the centerpiece of heaven? Jesus' presence. And if you get tired of coming to church, and you get tired of singing the songs, and you get tired of, 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 of you know, the whole hum of life, you, you do understand we only live about 70 to 80 years, right? And you know that when eternity is compared to our 70 and 80 years of vapor, our life is like a vapor. That is that it, it, eternity, this is what we're going to be doing in eternity. We're going to be enjoying God's Word. We're going to be enjoying His presence. So if we can't even last 30, 30 40, 50, 60 years of our saved life in church, well, I feel sorry for you in heaven. Because the centerpiece of heaven is going to be Jesus' presence. Psalm 1611 says, In thy presence is fullness of joy. And that's what God was saying. Rejoice in the Lord always. Joy in my presence always. Don't get tired of my presence because that's... If you're saved, have you received Christ as your Savior? Are you, are you a child of His? Well, then you're going to go to His presence one day. And He doesn't want you to get tired of heaven. So practice now. You see, life here on earth is merely practice for heaven. He said, rejoice in the Lord. How much? Always, at all times. Rejoice in the Lord always. In times like these, you need a Savior. In times like these, you need an anchor. Be very sure, be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. This rock is Jesus. Yes, He's the one. This rock is Jesus. The only one, be very sure, be very sure. Your anchor holds and, and grips the solid rock. It says, in times like these, you need the Bible. In times like these, oh, be not idle. Be very sure, be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. In God's classroom, God wants you to learn one thing. How to keep from worrying. How to keep from worrying.
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I praise and thank you, Lord, for a chance to preach your word and ask you, Lord, to please take this message, and I pray that you please minister grace to the hearts of the hearer, or that we would be able to take this and we will be able to disseminate it and pass it out and let it do a work in our hearts, but then also use it to help the hearts of those around us to trust in you. I pray, Lord, for your help. I pray, Lord, for your unction and your Holy Spirit anointing over me, Lord. I pray that you'd please use the mediums that we have of getting this message out. I pray, Lord, that you'd please touch hearts. May lives be changed, Lord. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 5, Paul begins to tell us how to keep from worrying. You see, God's classroom, in God's classroom, He wants you to learn one thing, and that's how to keep from worrying. Because God knows, God knows that in a fallen, sinful world, sin, when it's finished, brings forth death. Brings forth death. And, and you're going to have ups and downs. You're going to have times of highs and times of low. But don't worry. Don't worry. Don't fret about it. How do you keep from worrying? Verse 5, let's go to Philippians 4, verse 5. He says, let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Verse 6, he says, be careful for nothing. That word careful means full of care, full of anxiety, troubled in spirit. You remember the story in Luke chapter 10, how that Martha and Mary and Lazarus, they were at, a ho at, at their house and Jesus was, he was up. Uh, he was visiting them, and, and the Bible says that, that Martha was in the kitchen. And uh, I remember uh, seeing, uh, seeing uh, some folks with uh, their, they were, they were in their kitchen and, and doing some cooking. And, and, and they, were, uh, they, they were doing, uh, she was getting the meal ready and, and getting things ready. And she comes, and, and uh, she's the only one in the kitchen, and, and she's just, just laboring, and she's working. And, and, and she comes and says to Jesus, Jesus, and she sees that Mary's sitting there on the floor on, at Jesus' feet just listening to him talk. Instead of, come on, Mary, and she says to Jesus, hey, Jesus, tell Mary to come and, come and help me. You know, I'm trying to get this dinner ready for you. And Jesus said to her, thou art careful and troubled about many things. Then he says, one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen the good part. You see, she was full of care, and she was full of trouble, and, and she was full of anxiety, and, and trying, to, trying to please, and not really realizing that Jesus said, Jesus wants, wanted her to be careful for nothing. Be careful for nothing. And that's what he wants for us. He doesn't want us to be full of anxiety. But he says, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. How do you keep from worrying? Number one, how do you keep from worrying? Pray right. Pray right. You see, this verse gives us a, a recipe on how to pray right. Praying right involves three things. Look what it says. It says, but in everything by prayer. Obviously, it in includes prayer. Prayer is asking. John R. Rice has a, has a, a book on prayer. Dr. Hiles did a, did a, did a book on prayer. And, and the, the, the thing that, that God says in his words, you have not because you ask not. Prayer is asking. But prayer also must include adoration, worship of God. How many times have, have, have kids wanted to, 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 to get something from mom and dad? And, and what did they do? Oh, mom, you're so pretty. You're so handsome, daddy. And you're so nice. And you're so generous. Can I have $10? <laughs> and, you, and, you, and, you, and they butter you up. Well, God, you know, God created us in His image. You know, it, it's not bad when we're going to go to prayer and we're and we're going to uh, uh, ask God for things to, to butter Him up. Of course, the Bible says you have not because you ask not because you ask amiss that you may consume it on your lust. It's putting that request and Lord, if it's Your will, if it's Your will. But praying right involves three things, and one of them is asking, is requesting. James 5.16 says, The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth, availeth much. The second thing that prayer involves is supplication. Supplication, supplication is, is a big 50-cent word. Little girls, it's a big 50-cent word. Can you spell it? It means to beg sincerely and not with vain repetitions. It mean, it's simply that, to beg sincerely, beg from your heart, a heartfelt request, supplication. Hebrews 5 and verse 7, it says, Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him, God, that was able to save him from death and was heard 
in that he feared, though he were a son, yet he learned, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. This was speaking about Jesus. Jesus supplicated his father. He begged his father in the Garden of Gethsemane. Remember, he was, he was uh, sweating as it, as it were great drops of blood. And he, 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 it was the, the sin, the sin. He had never touched sin, and he didn't want to touch sin. And so he's asking his Lord, if there be, if, if, I, if this cup can pass from me, let it be done, but not my will. And so with supplication, he went to God, but God's, God remained silent, and he learned obedience by the things which he suffered so praying right involves three things. It involves prayer. It involves asking. It involves begging, supplicating. And then it says also thanksgiving. It says, let your request be made known unto God by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. So it involves uh, thanksgiving. Go to Daniel chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6. I want you to see something in, in the life of Daniel. Daniel chapter 6 is after Ezekiel. Ezekiel, then Daniel, then Hosea. Daniel chapter 6. And verse 10, Daniel chapter 6 and verse 10, this is the time when the decree, when, when the, the uh, other princes of the kingdom tried to, to legally trap Daniel and uh, to get rid of him. They, they were jealous of him. In verse 10, it says, Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, this is the decree that said you can't pray to any other god but the king. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks. Gave thanks. It takes faith to thank God before the prayer is answered. Think about that. It takes faith to thank God before the prayer is answered. He knew he was putting his life on the line by kneeling down. He, but yeah, he opened his windows. He didn't do it in private. He didn't go to his closet like Jesus said. Jesus said, go to your closet. He said, no, I'm going to do it from the window. I, this is what I've always done. And so he knew that the writing was signed, yet he gave thanks before his God as he did before time. You see, when you pray right, when, you, uh, when, you, when you're praying, when you're supplicating, when you're giving thanksgiving, verse 7, go back to Philippians chapter 4, look what happens. Look what happens. When you are right with God in this area, look what happens. Verse 7, and the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. God puts a peace in your heart. God puts a placidity in your heart that you can't explain. And feel like you feel like you're numb, uh, and 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 the, the the tempestuous winds and the storms are, and the lightnings and the thunders are are crashing in your life. But you're just walking through like zippity doo da, zippity day, my oh my, what a wonderful day. You're just walking through like nothing, because that's what God does. That's what God does. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So how to keep from worrying? You pray right. When you pray right, God's peace will come. And that will help you, number two, think right. Go to verse 8. It will help you think right. Verse 8 says, Finally, brethren, what sort of things are true? What sort of things are honest? What sort of things are just? What sort of things are pure? What sort of things are lovely? What sort of things are of good report? If there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. When you pray right, and your life, your inner man, you are right with God in your heart, it will help you think right. And the Bible says that these are the things that you should be thinking about, about things that are true. Don't listen to gossip. Don't listen to lies. Don't listen to rumors. Think about true things, honest things, just things, pure things. Don't listen to impure things. Don't listen to, to stuff that would, that would grieve the Holy Spirit. Think, listen to things that are lovely, things that are of good report. Somebody comes and brings a gossiping report or a bad report, you should be saying, hold it, hold it. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Let's go to Philippians 4, 8. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Uh, whatsoever things are of good report. Is this a good report about this person? Because you're seeming like you're really negative. Oh, I'm sorry. Can't listen to it. So sorry. You talk about surprising that person. It's like, whoa, you're a fanatic? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. 
because I want to pass God's class. I want to go through the grades. I want to grow in the Lord. He says, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. When you pray right, it will help you think right. 2 Corinthians 10.5 says, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Maybe that's something that you ought to be praying. Maybe that's something that you ought to be asking the Lord. Lord, bring my thoughts into captivity. Do you ever, whenever you're alone, does your mind ever go places that it shouldn't go? Maybe that's something that you need to pray and say, Lord, I need you to, I need to, put, I need you to put my thoughts in prison. I need you to incarcerate my thoughts because they are not pleasing to you. Because what you think is what the Holy Spirit has to deal with. He has to see that. And it grieves him. And he can't have full access and he have, cannot have full control of your life if that's what's going on in your mind. And he says, I want you to think right. And so you ask the Lord, Lord, bring every thought into the, capt- to the obedience of Christ. Wrong thinking will cause you to have wrong feelings. Wrong thinking will cause you to have wrong feelings. When you pray right and you think right, it will help you do right. It will help you do right. Look at verse 9. It says, Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Sin always brings with it a lack of peace. Sin always brings with it a lack of peace. Romans 14, 23 says, For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. When the, Lord, when the Lord gives you a troubled spirit about something that you're wanting to do, and you don't stop, and you don't say, You know what? I should stop. I don't have total peace about it. The Bible says, Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. It's best for you just to wait until the Lord gives you peace about it. It may be nothing wrong with it. Maybe, maybe the Lord's just trying you. Maybe the Lord, He's just testing you. Are you going to listen? Or are you going to disregard me? He says, what service not of faith is sin? Sin always brings a lack of peace. Holiness before God will bring you peace in the inner man. Holiness before God will bring you peace in the inner man. Paul said that we are to copy those things that we learn from him. Look what it says. Those things which you, be able, which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And if you will follow that recipe, if you will follow my example of doing what's right, then the God of peace will be with you. What does Proverbs 21, 8, 20, 28 1 say? It says, The wicked flee when no man pursueth. Why? Why is the wicked man fleeing when no, no man is pursuing him? Because his conscience. He, he's, he's constantly looking over his shoulder. He knows he's stolen from somebody, so he's, he, he, all of his things, he is, he is, he's judging everybody by his heart's condition. You ever heard of that? A thief judges by his heart's condition. A thief always thinks that everybody around him wants to steal from him. Well, what, what would make him think that? It could be that totally honest person. Well, it's his heart's condition. That's the way he thinks, so he thinks other people think the way he thinks. But the, the Bible says the wicked flee when no man pursueth. Why? Why is this man fleeing? Why is this man running? Because he, he knows that, that, that it's going to catch up to him. His conscience is grieved. But it says, the, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. The righteous are as bold as a lion. Look about a, uh, think about a lion. Um, Going to the to the different zoos, you, know, you can see the lion, and the, you have you know in, in the one in Dallas they have this uh, the uh, Serengeti grill, and they, they have these thick glass portions on the side of the Serengeti grill, and the lions will come and sleep right right by the glass, and you can you can be like four inches away from a lion, but a lion, whew, they're bold, they're tenacious, they're vicious, they're ferocious, and that's how the righteous are. Why? Because they know in their private life and in their public life, they've been the same. They've not been doing one thing in private and another thing in public. And so the God of peace is with them. Paul says, do right. That which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. You see, Paul, when he went out to these places, when he went to go start these churches, when he went to go to, go to these different places, he didn't have anybody uh, micromanaging him. He didn't have anybody from the church of Antioch saying, now, Paul, you need to get up at this certain time. And Paul, you need to do this at a certain time. And Paul, you really need to pray at a certain time. You need to read your scroll at a certain time. And you need, you need to do this. He didn't have anybody. He did it on his own. He did it on his own. 
And he said to them, Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And what will it give you? It will give you peace. The God of peace will be with you. Because you know, you know as honestly as you can tell that you've done everything that would be pleasing to God. And if you had to be, all of a sudden, standing before God at the judgment, and God were to judge you on your life at that current moment, you'd be like, as far as I know, Lord, there's nothing between my soul and the Savior. I, there's nothing that you have already dealt on my heart about that I've not gotten right, that I've not come to you about. When you pray right, it will help you think right. And when you think right, it will help you do right. Righteous. The righteous are as bold as a lion. The righteous is the one who does what is right. Do right till the stars fall. Do right till the last call. Do right when there's no one else to stand by you. Do right when you're all alone. Do right, though it's never known. Do right, cause you love the Lord. Do right, do right. In verse 11, he says, Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned. Where did he learn this stuff from? In God's classroom. He learned that in whatsoever state he found himself in, he would be content. What did he learn in this classroom? He learned how to be abased. There are going to be times, there are going to be valleys, there are going to be uh, trouble times and, and times of uncertainty. There are going to be times when, when, when a report comes to you and says it's cancer or it's leukemia or it's, it's something wrong with your child or this or that and the other, whatever it is. He learned how to be abased, but he also learned how to abound. And when you abound, that's not the time to start letting it go to your head. You realize, you know what, there's a balance in life. There's, there are going to be times, life is full of ups and downs. There's going to be time when you're up, and there's going to be times when you're down. And you've got to learn how to balance that. You've got to learn how, how, to, how do you act when you're on the mountaintop. Do you act pious and hypocritical and like a Pharisee? No, you act humble. Because you know, you know, you know that the, the peak of a mountain is only very, very, very little bit of surface area. Because as soon as you hit that peak, what, what, are you on, what, what happens? You're on your way down. <laughs> you may be high up on the mountain, but you're still on your way down. Because the peak is only a very small point. Well, the end of that, of that descent is a valley. And if you're in that valley... Well, be encouraged, because at the end of the valley, it eventually does a V, and you end up, if you're the depth of the valley, what happens immediately? You start going up, it's going to get all better. And he learned how to be at a base, he learned how to abound, he, he realized that everywhere and in all things he was being instructed to be full, to be hungry, to abound, to suffer need, and he realized, I can do this through Christ. I have Jesus by my side. Paul got his diploma and his bachelor's degree, and his master's degree, and his doctorate's degree in the field of not worrying. In the field of not worrying. I remember the story of John R. Rice whenever he stopped one day and, and he was going to pick up a hitchhiker. And this man, uh, he picked him up. He, he was having pity on him. And uh, he picked him up and began going down the road, and uh, the hitchhiker pulls a gun on him and points it at him and says, give me all your money. Stop this car. He threatened him in, in some way, shape, or form. And John R. Rice just kept driving, and he said, hey, I told you, give me all your money. Or I'm going to shoot you. And John R. Rice is just sitting there driving, just driving. I'm being serious. You give me all your money. Or I'm going to sh shoot you right now. And John R. Rice says, you can't threaten me with heaven. He just kept on going. And that's how it is for Christians. Whatever happens, happens. You can't threaten me with heaven. I mean, if, if you were to take my life, what's the worst thing that can, ha that can happen? I'm going to be in heaven. I'm going to be in God's presence. And God says, don't worry. I've got this. I've got this. 
Let's turn in our Bibles to Isaiah 41.10. I'd like to sing this, and then we'll have a prayer of dismissal. Isaiah 41.10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Let's sing it. Isaiah 41.10. Isaiah 41.10, and then we'll have a closing prayer. Fear thou not, for I am with thee, be not dismayed, for I am thy God, I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Sing it again. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you, Lord, for your love and care for us. I pray, Lord, that you please, Lord, give us your peace. Help us, Lord, as we go through these times. I pray, Lord, that you please help, our, help us to rest in you, Lord. Help our hearts to be at peace. I pray, Lord, that you give us the ammunition, the spiritual ammunition, Lord, to take thoughts like this. Maybe our hearts aren't troubled. Maybe, maybe we're fine. Maybe, maybe the Lord has given us that peace. But Lord, there's others around us. Help us, Lord, to take this like corn, like seeds, and dispense it. And sow, heart, sow peace in the hearts of those around us. And be more aggressive. Be, be more, more, more fervent in our efforts and, and our, our attempts to, to try to Get people to trust in you and point people to Jesus Christ. Lord, I love what Dr. Howell said in a sermon one day. Keep your chin up. Keep your chin up because it's easier to see heaven that way. I pray, Lord, you please help us to dispense this peace and be an encouragement to our family, but then also to our neighbors and the people that we interact with. Lord, I pray you please bless our church folks. Bless those who visited with us today. I pray, Lord, that you please bless them.